In this video, we're going to take the time to take a first look at polymorphism and how creating these systems with inherited properties are going to give us some great benefits. So go ahead and get the Polymorphism First Look project loaded up into the Eclipse IDE so that you could run these along with me. So this system is already completed so that we can quickly talk about a few things. But basically we have our animal with the name and the breed. We have our cat with the name and the breed and the ISD Claude. And I've added in the get and set for ISD Claude. Now of course we don't need name and breed because that's handled at the superclass level animal. Same thing with dog. We have get as a service animal and set as a service animal. And once again, we don't need name and breed because those again are handled at the superclass level. So in our driver, what I want to do is talk about some of the things that you may already know and show how using polymorphism is going to give us some really great advantages. So when we work with arrays or lists, we should know that we can't create a mix and match. So if I have an array of strings and an array of integer, I can't put integers or doubles into my strings and I can't put words or characters or strings into my numbers. So here it's possible to do words zero is the, words one is infinite skills, words two is animal system version, but I can't do words three equals 2.0 because that's not a string. Technically, I could go about putting this in a string, but then it's a string, not a number. So I'm not mixing and matching types. I'm simply just making it work. And then of course, we've also seen numbers, zero, one, two, seven, 15, 19, but I can't set the numbers as a string. It won't let me do that. Now I could put my string in there as long as it is a number and then cast it back when I need it. That's still not a good idea. We want a way to store our objects. And so we create objects that contain numbers and strings and then we store them into an array. So we might make a person and that person might have a name and an age. And then we can make an array of person. And then we can get the people back out of that person array and work with their individual properties. And that's great. But now we have a system. We have animals, cats, and dogs. So if I make an array of dogs, I can't put cats in that. If I make an array of cats, I can't put dogs in that. But the really nice thing about inheritance, by the fact that we have that common superclass animal, our super type is animal, and therefore we can store both dogs and cats, and even animals in this case, in an animal array. So what we see is we create this array of animal, call it my pets, and we'll set five different pets into there. Now just a couple different ways we can add in pets. We have a dog D is a new dog. We have a cat C as a new cat. We've seen that before. But here, right on the array, we can actually just create a new dog, a new cat, and a new animal. So now I have this array of animals, and there are five animals in this array. So let me go ahead and print this out. And what we see is that we have all of our five animals printed out just like we would expect, and they have their properties set. Now, you may have said, what's that for loop? I've never seen that before. Well, this is actually an enhanced for loop, and we can use this on arrays and lists. When we're typing this, we say for each, and then we put the type that we're looking at, a variable that we want to get out of it, in whatever the array or list name is. We get for each animal A in my pets, and then we just print it out. So that's just an enhanced for loop. It's an easy way to loop through an entire collection, either an array or a list. So keep that in your pocket of tools. But how does the system know that I'm looking at a cat or a dog well, the good news is, is that even though the array is of type animal, the underlying type here is a dog, here is a cat. And so when I call the two string, it actually leverages the two string of whatever that object is, even if it's being stored as an animal, it's still at the base level here, a cat. And so the cat's two string is run, thereby printing out the properties. That works. So why shouldn't we be able to then just go ahead and start setting the properties of those different pets? And we can, in fact, if we actually use our IntelliSense here, we can see that we can get breed, we can set breed, we can get name, we can set name. But basically what happens is, as soon as I try to use a more specific type that doesn't exist on animal, I have a problem. I cannot call set is a service animal. I cannot call set is declawed, even though my pet zero is a dog and my pet two is a cat. The system now knows these are animals at this level. I can't guarantee that underlying types are there that aren't animals. And since animal doesn't specifically define set is a service animal or set is declawed, those statements are illegal. So this is where we get some really powerful polymorphism. Now we've stored all these different types into one single array, but we're stuck because our dogs and cats, we can't work with them, correct? No, we can work with them. We just need to know what each one is. And so you might say, oh, I know that my pet zero is a dog and my pets two is a cat. So I can actually then cast them back to their type. Here, a dog, here, a cat. 
And we have to wrap the entire variable then. So my pet zero cast to a dog becomes an object that now actually works as a dog, so I can call set as a service animal. Same thing here. My pets two cast to a cat. The entire thing wrapped becomes a variable. Set is declawed true is fine. But what happens if animal two wasn't a cat? So this works great as long as we know the types for sure. And basically, we're also hard coding in numbers on these arrays. And what happens if we move things around? Now we're really stuck. We have hard coded dog and cat casting. Well, you're identifying right there that there's a couple of problems. We don't want to do that. First of all, let's try to cast a dog as a cat and set it declawed. We know that my pet zero happens to be a dog here, so there's no way it should work as a cat, right? And we'll see that of course it doesn't. We get a cast class exception. Dog cannot be cast a cat at driver main line 66. So we know that's a really big problem. So there's a way that we can fix both of these problems in one fell swoop. Basically, the instance of is going to give us the ability to determine the underlying type of an object, and we can therefore code for that and handle it appropriately. So we can again use our enhanced for loop, so for each animal A in my pets, so now we're not locked into the specific number, we can then determine is A a dog by saying if A instance of dog, and then inside of there we can cast it. What I've done is separated these into variables just to make it more easy to see than this statement. We could have again done that wrapping around A. And so if you tried to set A as a dog and call that, it actually knows that we're inside of the dog. If we try to set A dot set is a service animal, the system is smart enough to know we're in the dog. We're going to actually wrap that and cast it to a dog. So that's pretty cool too. To make this easier to read, I just left this as a variable. My pet dog. Now we call directly to set as a service animal once we've cast it back to a dog here. And then we can actually print out the information, again using the animal type here, or using the direct variable. Either way, it's going to access the same underlying object. And so either way works fine to get the name. And then we'll just print out the information at the end when we're all done. And so what we see then is we correctly change things here. We have every service animal set to false. We have every is declawed set to false. And if we want to change that, we can easily change the service animal status to true. And we see that all of our dogs will now be service animals. And you could do the same thing with cat. And of course, Tank the Turtle is left alone because we did not code anything for the instance of animal.